Sometimes, with the products we have, it's hard to be content. Things don't always work how they should do, and sometimes the smallest of things can start to irritate us. But it seems that somehow, the internet manages to serve us with the perfect adverts for the latest new products, where clever marketing is implemented in an attempt to relieve you of your hard-earned cash. Every year, the latest product promises to be better than your current one, convincing you that you need the upgrade. Sometimes products genuinely get better, and we as consumers enjoy the benefits of this new technology or service, but other times companies implement this strategy called planned obsolescence, which is when companies intentionally and actively choose to make their products worse in order to save some room for an update or an upgrade in a year or two's time. This strategy often attempts to force or tempt you into upgrading your products more frequently, and you may have been subjected to this more times than you might think. If you're someone who frequently upgrades, it may be good to consider the wider effects frequent upgrading might be having on your life. As a consumer of tech products, I've recently been faced with a dilemma. I'm sure some of you will have noticed that all of my videos are uploaded in 1080p. However, if you look at any successful channel with subscribers into the hundreds of thousands, all of their videos are in 4K on cameras with incredible features, which is starting to make me wonder. Now that my channel has started to gain some more traction, this is surely something I'm gonna need if I'm ever going to reach where I'm aspiring to get to. The problem is, my camera, which I bought to take stills two and a half years ago, will only record in 1080p and constantly overheats. To make matters worse, my six-year-old MacBook, which I use to edit all of my videos, can only hold up to editing in 1080p as well. This means that to make the jump to 4K, I need to upgrade both my laptop and my camera, which isn't going to be cheap. This has made me contemplate, when is the right time to upgrade? For instance, my phone is also now four generations old. Most people I know upgrade their smartphones every one to two years, so surely now would be a good time too. But like my camera, my laptop and my phone, this thought process can be applied to anything. How about your car? What about your games console? Backpack? Keyboard? Desk lamp? Trainers? You get the picture. Historically, I've always waited around four to five years to upgrade my computer. My first laptop purchase was the first 13-inch unibody MacBook Pro, which I bought using a student discount before I started studying architecture back in 2009. I upgraded it five years later in 2014 to the newer 15-inch model, just after beginning my master's degree. Now in 2020, six whole years later, I'm faced with the same monumental cost in order to keep my workflow for YouTube efficient and effective. The thing is, I could have quite easily justified this purchase to myself every two or three years, and many of the people I know actually do this, and especially so with things such as phones, trainers, cars, and other items. One thing I've struggled with and continue to struggle with is trainers. In the past, before the concept of minimalism had been solidified in my value system, I would upgrade or buy new trainers every four to six months. The thought of unboxing a brand new pair of trainers and slipping them on for the first time had too much allure. The latest pair of Nike trainers, showcased in storefronts and across billboards, ooze comfort, style and status. And I knew that if I got those trainers, I'd feel great. And when I did buy them, it felt amazing. But this tended to only last for the first two days. If this is something you also do with trainers, yoga pants, or anything for that matter, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. But in my experience, whenever I upgrade anything, trainers, cars, gear, or tech, I never feel any happier because of it in the long run. A week or two later, I feel exactly the same as I did before, but with a slightly nicer product and a larger hole in my wallet. The reason we feel like this is because of something called hedonic adaptation, a term coined by social scientists Brickman and Campbell in their article Hedonic Relativism and Planning the Good Society. This was backed up in 1978 when a trio of researchers at Northwestern University and the University of Massachusetts did a study on levels of happiness on lottery winners and people who were now paraplegic or quadriplegic as a result of suffering terrible accidents. This is not to trivialise either of these things, but what was interesting was that, in the study, both groups eventually came back to their same level of baseline happiness. 
despite experiencing massive changes to their initial external circumstances. When purchasing items, we probably find that something similar happens. We first set out living like normal until we see an item we'd like and make a decision to purchase it. This initial change to our external circumstances feels great, so we get a huge spike in our levels of contentment. However, after just a couple of days, this begins to fade. And within a week or two, we're right back to where we started. Here we stay waiting for our next fix where we'll often find that this process ends up repeating itself again and again, as the planned obsolescence kicks in and clever marketing baits us into purchasing items while we're bored at home, unsatisfied with how things currently are. This term hedonic adaptation is at the core of why I've found minimalism so beneficial to my daily life. I found that when you realize that more stuff isn't going to make you any happier, you become a lot less dependent on the highs and lows that consumerism brings. You become a lot more intentional about what you do and why you do it, which makes you question what brings you true happiness and fulfillment in the first place. And in my experience, this has never been with products. To understand where we get our sense of happiness and fulfillment, this is where Maslow's hierarchy of needs comes in. If you've never heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's essentially a theory in psychology composed of five tiers of human needs. The needs are physiological, food, water, warmth, rest, safety and security, love and belonging from friendship and intimate relationships, esteem, so senses of accomplishment and prestige, and finally self actualization including creative pursuits and achieving one's full potential and needs at the bottom of the pyramid must be satisfied before individuals can attend to the needs that are higher up. This is where we begin to understand how upgrading actually holds us back. Our desire for consumption often gets in the way of self-actualization. Now that 0% finance deals are more available to us than ever before, people are habitually upgrading their items every single year without really being able to afford them in the first place. As our careers eventually flourish and our salaries go up, so do our expenses. And the more we consume, the more these seemingly small payments for laptops, phones, gadgets, and cars, they all add up and we get tied down to the financial burden of our massively inflated lifestyles, whilst really not being any happier than we were to begin with because of hedonic adaptation. This is how we get tied down to 40 hour work weeks in jobs that we don't enjoy. Perhaps if we were more intentional about our purchases and only purchased things that we truly needed, we could work less and our purchases wouldn't get in the way of taking the time to pursue our dreams and goals. Now, I'm not saying that we should all stop purchasing items and go and live under a rock. If tech or fashion is truly something that you find happiness and fulfillment from, you should totally go out and do those things. But by being intentional about why you do it, you can steer clear from the mindless consumption that plagues society and help your wallet and the environment in the process. Creating content on YouTube to help spread this message of efficiency and effectiveness is really what I'm most passionate about. And viewing items that need upgrading simply as tools has been really helpful in helping to justify their purchase. If you're interested in learning more about my process and some of the finer details that go on in making decisions like this, I post every week on Patreon. Here I talk about the things I'm doing to help me be as efficient and effective as possible. And I just uploaded a video on how I justify my purchases. So if you're interested, I'd highly recommend checking it out. By doing this, you'll be able to support my work and join our growing community over on Patreon. Once again, thank you guys for watching and for all of your support in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.